have some here, and, and we'll pass it around. Um, urea is a compound that's synthesized. It's, it's made in plants. It's made out of natural gas and water. Our diesel exhaust fluid is made of natural gas and water. So you can see that it's not going to be very difficult to make. That we think that fears that it'll be expensive uh, will be mitigated when we get into production. The global capacity of, uh, S of urea today is supposed to be, according to Wikipedia, in the neighborhood of 100 million tons. So if every single truck in North America were to switch to SCR overnight, that would increase the urea consumption about 2%. Um, urea is widely used today primarily uh, as a fertilizer. It's 46% nitrogen. It's used in a solid form. It's a crystalline solid. Uh, it, it's a system, it's a substance that makes a, a crusty white uh, growth around, sometimes around the lid of a bottle or a jar. You might see that. Um, people sometimes fear that th there's a problem with it. And I'm just going to show you how much of a problem it is. Now, don't worry about this. I'm not going to blow anything up, at least not too much. There'll be a little pot. But I have some urea here. And what I'm going to do is just pour some into this ashtray here. I don't think that'll blow up too high, do you? And what we're going to do, if you can smell it, it's kind of a small smell of ammonia here. But let's uh, just let's see what kind of a pop it makes. Ready? I'll do this slowly for the camera. Maybe I should shield my eyes. Well, you know, it's mostly water. And, and fears about urea are groundless. Um, I'm going to pass it around. I'm going to um, ask you to yeah, take a look at it, rub it on your hands if you want to. Is it nasty? No more nasty than, than diesel fuel. I wouldn't want you to get diesel fuel on your clothes. Don't get this on your clothes. It's not really any worse than windshield wiper fluid. Um, but it, it's something easy to experience. So We covered some of these things about how it's synthesized and, and where you get it. Why is it called diesel exhaust fluid? You know that in Europe they call it AdBlue. Well, because um, the industry in this side just wanted a generic name. What do you put in your automatic transmission? Automatic transmission fluid, right. And so that's what we're doing here. The percentage is 32.5% urea, 67.5% demineralized water. The reason for that is um, it has, that gives it its lowest freezing point, which is 12 degrees. We're going to have standards that will always govern the quality of diesel exhaust fluid very tightly. And uh, it has to be kept pure and clean. And uh, it should never be home brewed. Uh, it'll be inexpensive enough that I don't think you'll need to, to do anything like that. As this slide shows, uh, if you had a mixture of urea and, and water that was 0% urea, meaning it's pure water, well, that freezes at 32 degrees. And then you get this eutectic point down here. This is the 32.5% where it's 12 degrees Fahrenheit. By the way, one of the other uses for urea is as a de-icer. Okay, so it does freeze. Well, what does that do to the driver? Nothing. I mean, you can have a truck that's been standing there for two weeks in the frigid frozen ice, and that DEF tank is solid. So what? You get in the truck, start it up, and drive away in the normal amount of time. Um, because almost immediately, it'll start to melt right here, and we'll take care of the fluid in the lines, and it'll run for uh, quite some time on, on the amount of urea that we can make available to it. It will never, ever give you a, an issue in, in cold startup. That, that, that won't be a problem. So how far can you drive across the country? I don't know if you can see, but there's a map of the United States here on a tank of, of urea or diesel exhaust fluid. Well, our tank will be 70 liters, which is 18 and a half gallons. And you can take this 3,000 mile coast to coast trip on 13 gallons. So you'll have enough left over to, to come part way back. Um, are you going to be able to find diesel exhaust fluid on the road? Certainly after we come out with trucks that use it. Um, I'll get into that in a second. Um, let's talk about cost, because there's been a lot of fears about how expensive diesel exhaust fluid will be. In fact, you can buy some cars today that actually use diesel exhaust fluid. And if you go and buy it under their brand label, uh, in their parts department, you come up sometimes with uh, $14 for half a gallon. Well, you know what, if I bought their antifreeze, it would be close to that anyway. 
Um, how expensive was ultra-low sulfur diesel a year before production began? We had to pay a fortune for it as a boutique fuel, just for the test fuels for our own test trucks. Once it went into production, which was another Y2K event, how expensive was it? Well, nobody could even tell you today how much of the diesel fuel cost is due to the ultra-low sulfur diesel. Uh, a penny, penny and a half is a good guess. So we think it'll be ultimately about uh, three quarters of the price of a gallon of diesel fuel. That's what our project has been calculating on. What we tell our salesmen is this, because when you work out the numbers, if you put 10 gallons of this stuff in at, let's say, 250 a gallon, $25 with, that in the next tank of diesel, you'll save yourself $50. What I'm saying is that for every dollar that you invest in diesel exhaust fluid, you cut your diesel fuel expense by a factor of two. Another way to word that is that our total fuel cost of the fuel plus diesel exhaust fluid the truck will consume will be 5% less than the D12D was uh, under the same conditions. And that was a pretty good engine as far as fuel consumption. How much will we use? Well, we're optimizing 2 to 4%. Maybe you might see a little bit less than that. It depends on your usage. It depends on the way the truck is driven. Um, we're optimizing for the lowest rate, the lowest total cost. That's written into the project targets to do the calculations. In other words, if we can get better fuel mileage by increasing the rate uh, and, and save a little bit of money, we'll do that. Here's a map that the industry's created now for where you might be able to get this uh, in the near future. Keep in mind that uh, Pilot Truck Stops was the first uh, travel center chain to announce that they will have diesel exhaust fluid available. And uh, they're rolling it out in the last two quarters of 2009 and the first two quarters of 2010. As soon as they made their announcement, the TA Petro chain did, and you can imagine that everybody else will. Well, that's one place. Well, you know, the requirements say that because we're selling <coughs> trucks that consume it, all of our dealers will have it available. And we'll sell it through our own parts system. So that's all the truck dealers there are. The car dealers, the same way. Um, but the biggest sale, I think, initially will come in, in the smaller containers that will be available just in uh, places all over the country. Um, the, here's a slide that does show the different ways that it can be delivered. You have the 275-gallon uh, IBC International Bulk Container, or sometimes called a tote. It's forkliftable, um, can be reused, and uh, that'll be popular for those fleets that have their own trucks and they change their own oil and, and they, they fuel their own trucks when they leave, and that'll probably be enough for many trucks to go out and come back. You have 55-gallon barrels. Uh, the smaller containers that have self-contained spouts will be available. And although this is not a DEF pump, it's, it's meant to show that ultimately it will be available on the line uh, as you come into a truck stop. Today, uh, we can say that in the future you'll find it on the same pallet maybe as, as this slide, which was taken in France, uh, as the windshield washer fluid. And when you know that it's available, and you can in fact carry a spare 500 miles like this, it takes away a lot of the problems of where do I find the stuff. Then we get into uh, onboard diagnostics. Many of you I know are working with that, uh, that are in this room. Onboard diagnostics is an umbrella that, that fits over the entire engine and emission control system, primarily to make sure that the uh, EPA uh, controls the accuracy of the measurement of the emission uh, devices to make sure that no truck is running around that creates too much emission control. And I think I have that right. It's not going to be n required in its fullest uh, extent on every engine that's made, but rather the primary engine of the different engine lines that you have, which in our case is the 13 liter, and of that the highest rating, and in our case it will be the, the 485, I believe. And to summarize this part of our presentation, why did we choose these? E SCR, primarily because it's more efficient. You can calculate that it'll save you as much as $3,000 a year. Uh, weight, although yes we are increasing some weight, but you can argue that we're less than a 15 liter competitive engine. Another argument uh, is that, you know, weigh the truck, the way it's going to be sell sold compared to the customer competitors and the way they're going to be sold, and, and we're confident that we'll be uh, competitive in weight. Our power density, because it's lower, um, higher rather, we have a higher uh, horsepower output. You can read through there. Complexity, 
durability, and most of all, cost of operation. The cost of operation uh, is going to go down.